Honourable Member for Fleetwood Port Kells. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on behalf of the constituents of Fleetwood Port Kells to speak in this House in support of Bill S7, the Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practices Act. If the measures in this bill are implemented, they will amend the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, the Civil Marriage Act, and the Criminal Code in order to add further protections for vulnerable individuals, in particular women and girls. Unfortunately, gender-based violence is a sad reality for women and girls across this country, whether they are Canadian-born or newcomers to Canada. In too many cases, that violence comes in the form of abusive, uh, cultural practices that have no place in this country. I'm speaking on practices such as polygamy, uh, underage marriage, forced marriage, and so-called honor killings. These abusive practices have damaging and wide-ranging consequences for their victims, and they also harm victims, children, and homes, and communities. Indeed, they severely affect all those involved uh, from influencing whether or not individuals can successfully immigrate to Canada for breaking down opportunities for integration and economic success. Mr. Speaker, our Conservative government made a strong commitment in the recent speech uh, from the throne to prevent and counter violence against women and girls within the borders of this country. The Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practices Act is a concrete example of this commitment. Its proposed measures are worthy of the support of all parliamentarians because they clearly would help ensure that barbaric cultural practices do not occur on Canadian soil. Bill S7 sends a clear message to newcomers to Canada as well as to those who are already part of Canadian society that such practices are unacceptable here. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration participated in many roundtables and consultations across Canada. Participants told the Minister that early and forced marriage, so-called honour killings, uh, polygamy, still occur in Canada. These practices that occur across all cultures and ethnicities will not be tolerated in Canada and our immigration system will not be used as a vehicle to perpetuate these acts. This bill reinforces the message that these practices are completely incompatible with Canadian values and will not be tolerated. And as I said, Mr. Speaker, one of these practices is polygamy, which although illegal in Canada, is an accepted practice in a number of other countries around the world. In 2011, ruling that upheld the constitutionality of Canada's polygamy law, the Honorable Chief Justice Bowman of the BC Supreme Court uh, found that there were physical, psychological, and social harms associated with the practice of polygamous marriages. He found that women in polygamous relationships face higher rate of domestic violence and abuse, including sexual abuse that children in polygamous families face higher infant mortality, tend to suffer more emotional, behavioral, and physical problems, as well as lower educational achievement that polygamous uh, families face, higher levels of conflict, emotional stress, and tension, and that polygamy institutionalizes gender inequality. For these reasons and more, we must enact measures that increases our ability to prevent polygamy from occurring on Canadian soil. Bill S7 would do so by enhancing existing immigration tools to render both temporary and permanent residents inadmissible for practicing polygamy in Canada. Of course, Mr. Speaker, polygamy is not the, the only cultural practice that contradicts Canadian values and causes harm to its victims. That is why Bill S7 contains measures to help counter early and forced marriages. These measures include setting a national minimum age of 16 years old for marriage. Currently, there is no national minimum age for marriage in Canada. Federal law, which applies only in Quebec, 
sets the minimum age at 16 years old. In other parts of Canada, the common law applies. So there is some uncertainty about the common law minimum age, but it is generally considered to be 12 for girls and 14 for boys. Although, in practice, very few marriages in Canada involve people under the age of 16, setting a national minimum age of 16 years or old for marriage would make it clear that underage marriage is unacceptable in Canada and will not be tolerated here. Other proposed amendments to the Civil Marriage Act in Bill S-7 include codifying the requirement that those getting married must ha uh, give their free and enlight enlightened consent to marry each other and the requirement for the dissolution of any previous marriage. In addition, Bill S-7 also contains measures that would amend the criminal code to prevent to help prevent forced or underage marriage and would create a new peace bond that could be used to prevent an underage or forced marriage. For example, by requiring uh, the surrender of a passport as well as preventing a child from being taken out of Canada. Uh, also notable, Mr. Speaker, are the measures in this bill that address uh, so-called honor killings, which are usually premeditated and committed with some degree of approval from family or community members. However, in some cases, they may also be alleged to be spontaneous killings in response uh, to behavior by the victim that is perceived to be disrespectful, insulting, or harmful to the family's reputation. In Canadian law, an individual facing murder charges can raise the defense of provocation. If this defense is successful, it can result in a reduced sentence. The defense of provocation has been raised so far unsuccessfully in several so-called honor killing cases in Canada. Accused murderers have uh, claimed that real or perceived marital infidelity, disrespectful defiance or insulting behavior on the part of the victims towards their spouse, sibling or parent provoked the killing. This provision may or may not have uh, yet been successful, but Mr. Speaker, what happens uh, if it is successful one day? We must not take the chance. No one should be able to use the defense that they uh, violently harmed another uh, because they were provoked. Uh, it is simply contrary to Canadian values for lawful behavior by a person to no matter how it uh, may be perceived as insulting to excuse their murderer. Uh, that is why measures in Bill S-7 would amend the criminal code so that such legal conduct by a victim can never be considered as provocation. In, conclu in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure all my honorable colleagues would agree that uh, we must stand up for all victims of violence and abuse and take necessary action to prevent these uh, practices from happening on Canadian soil. That is exactly what we uh, would be doing by ensuring this bill's passage into law. And that is exactly why I hope everyone in this House will join me in supporting the passage of this bill. I hope all honorable members of this House look past politics and vote in favor for this bill. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? L'honorable député de Beauport-Limoilou. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai écouté euh, le discours de ma collègue. C'est assez désolant, Monsieur le Président, parce que euh, les discours des conservateurs euh, ressemblent un peu au discours de charlatans d'une autre époque qui proposait un remède à une personne en santé en disant régler euh, tout, euh, tous les problèmes qu'il pouvait y avoir, euh, tous les maux, même donner de l'énergie. Mais en réalité, ce projet de loi euh, recoupe ou euh, cherche à se suppléer à déjà une foule d'articles du Code criminel qui préviennent justement des abus euh, liés à des agressions. Puis on ne parle pas évidemment de la question euh, du meurtre. Euh, on, parle, euh, on peut parler aussi de menaces, de contraintes. Mais ce qui est très troublant, c'est qu'on vient encore sur la fameuse euh, défense euh, de provocation. Et on l'applique strictement à une catégorie de meurtres euh, avec une connotation euh, raciste, en tout cas à, 
à seulement une petite partie de la population. Alors, ce que je voudrais savoir de la part de ma collègue, c'est pourquoi, pour cette catégorie où cette défense n'a jamais abouti euh, à, euh, à euh, éviter une condamnation, alors que ça existe pour d'autres catégories de meurtres, ce qui est tout aussi inacceptable. The Honorable Member for Fleetwood, Court Cows. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the Honorable Member for his question. Uh, let me be very clear here. The Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practices Act, it demonstrates that Canada's openness and generosity does not extend to early and forced marriages polygamy or other types of uh, barbaric cultural practices. Uh, Canadians, as I said in my speech, will not tolerate any type of violence against women and girls, including spousal abuse, violence in the name of so-called honor or uh, other violence. Uh, those found guilty of these crimes must be severely punished under Canada's criminal laws. The purpose of this proposed legislation Uh, is to stand up for the victims of uh, violence and abuse uh, and to send a very clear and a very strong message to those in Canada and those wishing to come to Canada that such practices will not be tolerated on Canadian soil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and comments are the Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, uh, other Conservative speakers have talked about since 2013 throne speech uh, that this is really meeting their, their goals and objective. And I would suggest to you that they've somewhat set the bar relatively low. Uh, it is a very serious issue in, in regards to violence and abuse uh, with women and, and girls. Um, and when we take a look at this legislation, does it make a difference? There are some aspects of it, I've made reference to it all afternoon, uh, that will make some difference. It is uh, a step forward. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, it's nowhere near what it is that the Conservatives are trumpeting from the rooftops uh, as to, in terms of what it is actually doing. And there is a great number of Canadians that are offended by the decision from the Prime Minister's office to name the short title, in particular to incorporate the cultural uh, aspect in the short title. My, my last question, because we are under time allocation, is to the member, given the importance of, uh, of the issue, why does she believe the government's incorporated such a provocative uh, a short title which will not be utilized in terms of a court of law? It's more of a political statement coming from the Prime Minister's office. Why does she feel that cultural has to be incorporated in it when it offends so many uh, Canadians? The Honourable Member for Fleetwood Port Cows, you have one minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me be here, uh, clear here again that our government had announced its uh, commitment to, to take these steps uh, in the 2013 speech from the throne. Uh, this was followed up in the 2015. Uh, series of roundtable consultations uh, led by our Minister of Immigration on violence against women in the context of immigration. And we think that Bill uh, S-7 is also uh, consistent with the aims of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Citizenship and Immigration on the issue of protecting women in our immigration system. And these actions uh, contained in this bill build on existing federal initiatives uh, that are aimed at ensuring that immigrant women and girls in vulnerable uh, situations, they have access uh, to support and services that meet their unique needs. Uh, the Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practice Act sends a clear message to those uh, coming to Canada that forced marriages and honor-based uh, violence or any other forms of uh, harmful cultural practices are an unacceptable and will not be tolerated. This bill, therefore, deserves the full support of all the members from both sides of the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.